I've come here to Cumbria on this blustery day to meet Richard Irving. Now, when Richard started farming here, he'd go out at night and he'd hear the most bizarre sounds. And it took him 10 years to find out what was making those sounds. And it turned out to be something rather special. They're nocturnal animals. In the spring, they congregate around the breeding ponds. When you approach the noise that they're making, you can find them. And there they were, something we'd never seen before. I didn't realise it was anything special. So it's real joy. So what is this special animal? Well, I've come out with Richard to uncover the mystery. Yo, God, loads. Loads of them. <laughs> Loads of them. Have a look. Have a look. Come down here. Are you ready? This is exciting. This is very How exciting. Many look at that. Oh, three. That's four. a. Oh, look at this. Beautiful. Yeah. This is a natterjack toad. And you can tell it's a natterjack because they've got this bright yellow stripe down their back, and a common toad would never have that. And my friend Chris Packham calls these the Lamborghini of the amphibian world. <laughs> so because they're such fast runners. Well, they yeah. are quick runners, aren't they? They yeah. don't jump, yeah. but they run. And look how short their back legs are compared with a frog. They are very short. Mm. They'd be no use for the French, wouldn't they? <laughs> Richard. <laughs> how long could they live to, potentially? Teenagers, 14, 15. And they are pretty rare, aren't they, Richard? Very rare. There's about 50 sites in the country where they are. What do they need to be successful? Well, the, the sites that do exist all seem to be on the coast, um, and I think that's probably because it stops the encroachment of the common toad, the competition from the common toad. Natterjacks are in trouble. Their numbers have declined all over the country. But Cumbria is a stronghold, with over 50% of the population living here. On Richard's farm, he does everything he can to help these increasingly rare animals thrive. Grazing sheep help produce short grass runways for those Lamborghini legs to run around in and find food. And by digging shallow pools, he's created perfect breeding habitats. But to have the full Natterjack experience, I need to come back at night and discover them more or less the same way Richard did 30 years ago. So here we are, Richard, on a chilly Cumbrian night. Yeah, a bit too cold, I'm afraid. It's quiet at the moment. What do we do? Wait and hope. Yes, and it will happen, I'm sure. And if you shine your torch on these ponds, you'll probably see a toad's head sticking up. And we're listening out for, if it does happen, it's the males. It's only the males that call, yeah. They'll be down here every night. So, can you hear that one? One will start up and then another one will join it. Before you know where you are, you'll have a whole gang waking around. That's exactly what's happening. That's absolutely bizarre, because, like I say, chilly Cumbrian evening, it sounds like we're in the boiling tropics. Absolutely. Doesn't it? You think you're in Africa, don't you? You think you're in Africa or in the middle yeah. of the rainforest? Yeah. It's a lovely sound, actually. We reckon it's travelled three miles from here. Three miles? Three miles. Natterjacks are the loudest amphibians we have in Europe. And the call is made by their voice box, and the balloon-like pouch helps project the sound. I'm staggered that such a tiny little creature, relatively, can make such a din. Do you think the female can tell the difference? You know, he sounds good and he doesn't sound so quite so good. I'm sure that's exactly what they do. Be so they work, they? Yeah. yeah. There must be something about the quality of the sound yeah. that's an indicator of how tough, how fit he is. Yeah. It's completely stopped now. There's just now an eerie silence and the wind blowing about our ears. Yeah. The tropics have left us. Yeah. As back. if they were never there. 